Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College, Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is EET 122, Digital 2. Today we're gonna to discuss the A-stable multivibrator. Okay, A-stable means no stable state. It continually oscillates between a one and a zero with a regular period, okay? So, um, as I already said, oscillates, it's an oscillator. Uh, and oscillators are often used as clocks. Given a predictable period, you've got a predictable frequency, and you can uh, synchronize a system on a clock. Okay, the example uh, that you see inside the book is a simple resistor hooked up to an inverter, hooked up to a capacitor, to ground, and what happens is you get this little feedback loop right here. Okay, this is a special type of inverter, where this is a Schmidt triggering inverter, and we'll talk about exactly how that is used. Okay, so initially uncharged, the capacitor is putting a zero in here, and again, keep in mind that there is a uh, plus five and ground on this. What happens here, what's the output of an inverter that has a zero input? Well, it's a one there, which is plus five. So what you have in effect is plus five on one side of the resistor and zero on the other. So current is gonna start flowing and it's gonna start charging this capacitor up to five volts, which is gonna change this input to a one. And again, if you're feeding an inverter one, what comes out is a zero. So now we have the opposite occurrence here where it's plus five on this side of the resistor and it's zero right here. And the capacitor discharges in this direction. Once it's discharged to a certain point, this becomes a zero. And again, if we're feeding a zero into a inverter, what comes out a one, What's across the resistor? Plus five, zero. And you can just loop back to where I started this whole discussion and play it again. And then once you get to here, you can loop back and play it again and loop back and play it again. What you get this is this constantly oscillating signal, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. Okay? So uh, that Schmidt triggering device, quite similar to how we, uh, we showed inside our monostable multivibrators. On one side of it, it's a high. One side of it, it's a low. There is no invalid region. Because remember how previously we discussed traditional logic signals have, let's say that's a logic signal here. On this side of it, it's a high. On this side of it, it's a low. And there's a region of invalid. Well, a Schmidt triggering device is a little bit different in the fact that it's got something like this. So here's our logic symbol. You know, as it's, remember our capacitor was initially uncharged, as it charges up, on this side, suddenly it becomes a high. Okay, so now the capacitor is going to discharge, and by the way, I should actually draw that correctly. Capacitor charges like that. So remember, according to our E equals one minus E to the negative T, whoops, tau, formula, it should have actually a slope kind of like that, but, and it starts dropping again, because remember it's switched over, because now it's plus five and current's going this, this, excuse me, that was a charge phase. Now we're gonna discharge, it's going this way, when that's zero, and that's plus five or the high. So now it's gonna start discharging according to whatever voltage it was, e to the negative t over time constant. 
what happens with the Schmidt triggering device is on this side here that is considered a low so there's almost two values there and notice how it's just going to keep going like this continually vacillating between the upper trigger point and the lower trigger point for a Schmidt um, meaning that there's no invalid region there's always on one side of this thing it's a high and one side of this thing it's a low okay so what does the output look like well here if this is our input and this is considered a high beyond here and then a low beyond here what's the inversion of that it's going to be low high so anytime it's falling you've got a zero on our output by the way this is our output okay so that is some um some pretty simple devices for an a stable multi vibrator um if you have taken ret 141 motor control uh there is a a ladder logic um chopper circuit which i think is really cool um and this from my understanding was actually used by henry ford way back when for i think the model t the way uh the way i understand it it was uh making a dc chopper circuit and this is how it's done so according to ladder, log ladder logic here's our line one and our line two and for this coil cr to energize we need to connect line one to line two okay so what we do is we put a switch there a contactor but it's a normally closed. So that switch though is controlled by this coil. So what happens is normally closed, it goes through, energizes the coil, but by energizing this coil, it opens this contact right here and you get something that looks like this. which de excuse me, the energizing, energizes the coil, opens up the contact, which breaks the circuit. But because it's a normally closed circuit, when it's unenergized, it goes back to a close, which energizes the coil, which goes back to here, which goes to there, which goes back to there, which goes back to there. So pretty cool, ladder logic, DC chopper circuit, that's exactly what an oscillator is um, using some ladder logic stuff. Okay, so we are going to go on how to set up a 555 timer as a A-stable multivibrator.